Here is the anterior position of the heart. If you flip it over, that will be the posterior side. Then, there is the superior and inferior parts of the posterior side. The apex is the pointed end of the heart consisting of muscles from the left ventricle. Located on the opposite end of the heart is the base. The anterior intraventricular sulcus divides the left and right ventricles. It is a groove that helps to identify where the interventricular septum is located between the two ventricles. The auricles are ear-like flaps that are made up of muscles from the atria. The atria are made up of two upper heart chambers. These two chambers have thin walls and receive the blood returning from the body. The right ventricle receives blood from the right atrium and pumps it into the main pulmonary artery. The left ventricle receives blood from the left atrium and pumps it into the aorta. Then the aorta carries and distributes the oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body. The superior vena cava, also called the precava, is a vein carrying deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. This vein is wide and short and receives blood from the upper body, for example, from the arms, neck, or head. The brachiocephalic artery is one of the three arteries that branch off of the aorta. It supplies blood to the head, neck, and specifically, the right arm. The aorta is the large artery that emerges from the left ventricle. This artery carries blood to the systemic circuit. Blood flows from the right atrium to the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Then, it is pumped through the pulmonary valve and into the pulmonary artery, which then goes into the lungs. From the lungs, blood flows to the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. It goes to the bicuspid valve and moves into the left ventricle. Then it goes through the aortic valve and into the aorta, which will redistribute the blood to the rest of the body. The chordae tendinae, also referred to as the heart strings, are fibrous cords that connect the bicuspid and tricuspid valves with papillary muscles. It stops the cusp after they have closed, from swinging back into upper chamber of the heart. The bicuspid valve, which is also known as the mitral valve or the atrioventricular valve, is located between the left atrium and left ventricle. This prevents blood from flowing back into the atrium when the left ventricle contracts. The tricuspid valve is an atrioventricular valve located between the right atrium and right ventricle. This valve allows blood flow from the right atrium into the right ventricle. The aortic semilunar valve is located between the aorta and the left ventricle. This is a flap of endo 
cardium and connective tissue reinforced by fibers which prevent the valve from turning inside out. It gets its name due to its half moon shape. The interventricular septum is the muscular wall between the right and left ventricles. The greater part of it is muscular and thick while the upper portion is thinner and more fibrous. The upper portion separates the aortic vestibule from the lower part of the right atrium and the upper part of the right ventricle. Papillary muscles are muscles anchoring the chordae tendinae to the valves of the heart. These muscles work with the chordae tendinae to prevent this backup of blood. The superior vena cava, also called the precava, is a vein carrying deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. This vein is wide and short and receives blood from the upper body. The sinoatrial node is a section of tissue located in the upper wall of the right atrium. This node acts as the pacemaker of the heart by setting the rate of contraction. The pulmonary valve is one of two valves that allow blood to leave the heart by the arteries. This valve only allows blood out one way, meaning blood can't go back into the heart through this valve. 